Section 5.4, multiple angle identities. So we've got some new identities to add to our unit circle card where we've got all of our other identities. We've got double angle identities, power reducing identities, and half angle identities. So go ahead and, um, like, it'd be really helpful if you had these written down while we're doing the examples in the, uh, in the rest of this. So if you want to pause and write those down or if you print off the slides before you start, then that's great. Um, notice on, on cosine 2u and on tangent of u over 2, this is saying cosine 2u can equal three different things. And so if you are given cosine 2u, you can replace it with any of these three things. And sometimes there's a good thing to replace with and sometimes there's not, depending on what else you have in the problem. Say with tangent of u over 2, it can equal any of these three things that we have on the right side. So let's get started. Prove the identity cosine 2u equals 1 minus 2 sine squared u. We're actually going to use the sum and difference identities on this. We're going to say, well, cosine of 2u is, whoops, is uh, cosine of what two angles added together? Well, wouldn't we say cosine of u plus u is cosine of 2u? And then we can use our sum for cosine, our identity, uh, from 5.3. So if you haven't watched that yet and you're totally lost, then go ahead and go watch that. Cosine u, cosine u, minus sine u, sine u. Okay, and so now what can we do here? Well, cosine u times cosine u is cosine squared u, and sine u times sine u is sine squared u. Looks like I'm in a pretty good place because now in order to get this to not have a cosine squared, I would replace cosine squared with the Pythagorean identity 1 minus sine squared u. And then I really don't need those parentheses. I just have 1 minus sine squared u minus another sine squared u, which is like terms. So that's 1 minus 2 sine squared u. And that's what we wanted from the other side. So we are done with that. Example 2 wants us to find all solutions to the equation in the interval from 0 to 2 pi of sine 2x equals sine x. Well, let's start off by um, looking at what sine 2x equals on our double angle identities. It equals 2 sine x cosine x. And let's also, because this is an equation, let's subtract our sine x over here. What, uh, that was supposed to be a subtract. Notice if I subtract sine x from the side, it doesn't actually do anything because sine 2x and sine x, those aren't the same. I can't actually subtract those. So I end up with 2 sine x cosine x minus sine x. Now let's factor out a sine x. That gives me 2 cosine x minus 1 equals 0. Now that my sine and my cosines are separated, I can set each part of this equal to 0 and finish solving. Um, so this I'd have to keep going and add 1 to the right side and then divide by 2. So I'm looking for between 0 and 2 pi, where does sine x equal 0? Well, if I look at my unit circle, that's at x equals 0 and at x equals pi. Then I'm looking for where does cosine x equal 1 half? And on the unit circle, uh, that would be like this angle right here where this side is smaller because it's one half. So that's a 60 degree angle, which means it's pi over three. And then the other place that happens is where cosine is also positive, which is down in our fourth quadrant. So that would be five pi over three. Okay, so I've got four answers here. Pi over three, five pi over three, zero and pi. Example 3, it asks us, um, I got lazy and didn't put thetas, it wants us to write the equation as one involving only sine theta and cosine theta, and it gives us sine 2 theta plus cosine 2 theta. So basically it wants us to use the identities. <coughs> um, and so sine 2 theta it has to be 2 sine theta cosine theta. Alright, well that only has sine thetas and cosine thetas. 
then uh, we could really do like three different things. We could say that cosine 2 theta is cosine squared theta minus sine squared theta. That's one answer to this. Or we could say this is 2 sine theta cosine theta. And then we could say cosine 2 theta is, um, what is it? 2 cosine squared theta minus 1. Or we could say 2 sine theta cosine theta plus 1 minus 2 sine squared theta. It just wants us to replace with the identities. It, and one of these three would be an appropriate answer. You wouldn't have to put all three. Just one of those three. Uh, would be our answer. Example 4 wants us to prove the identity sine 4x equals 2 sine x 2x cosine 2x. So this is kind of interesting the way this works out. We're going to go ahead and use the sum of 2x and 2x to work this out. So the sum and difference identity uh, for sine, I put sine of 2x cosine of 2x my sine is the same, it's a plus sine, and then cosine 2x, sine 2x. Okay, and then if I look, these are actually the same, they're just switched back and forth, so can't I say that that's 2 sine 2x uh, cosine 2x? And so that's what we were going for, so we're done with that proof. And what happens is it turns out that like if I have sine of of anything, like if I have sine of 6x, then what I can do is say that's 2 sine of whatever half of 6x is, which is 3x cosine 3x. And if you forget, you can just work out this, uh, this identity that we have here. Or if I try to do, you know, sine of 8x, that would be 2 sine uh, 4x cosine 4x and then we could probably keep going with that and change those as well but you get the idea I hope that you just take basically um, half of what that angle is that you're starting with and that's what goes uh, on the on the right side inside your sine and cosine so uh, solve algebraically for exact solutions in the interval 0 to 2 pi we have cosine of 2x plus sine of x so on a problem like this, I, I'm pretty sure that I want to get rid of this because this is a sine x that I can't really, I can't do anything with that. So it'd be really nice if instead of cosine 2x, I had something involving sine. Well, there are three choices for cosine 2x. What if I pick on purpose to put in the one that just has sine? Uh, so that would be the one that has 1 minus 2 sine squared x. Cosine 2x equals 1 minus 2 sine squared x. I picked that one because it's it's the only one that just has, has sine. Okay, because any of the other ones would have given me a cosine, in fact a cosine squared, that I wouldn't be able to really do anything with. Now if we look at this, this is negative 2 sine squared x plus sine x plus 1 equals 0. I can actually divide all of this by a negative 1 to get rid of that negative if I want to, because personally, for me, that makes factoring easier. And then let's think of this as though it was 2x squared minus x minus 1. The way we would factor that, I would use something called slide and divide, where you slide the 2 over here and get x squared minus x minus 2 you factor this into two parentheses so that we have x and x. We say what multiplies to get negative 2, that adds to get negative 1, that's negative 2 and plus 1. And then at, since we slid the 2 earlier, now we're going to divide by the 2. And if it divides, that's great. We simplify whatever we can, but if it doesn't, we move that number on bottom in front of x. So 2x squared minus x minus 1 if you factor it, it looks like x minus 1 times uh, 2x plus 1. Now let's put that back over here with our signs. So sine x minus 1 times 2 sine x plus 1 equals 0. Now let's separate it and set each part equal to 0.
So this is sine x equals 1, because uh, I add 1 to both sides. This one I would subtract 1 and then divide by 2, giving me negative 1 half. And then I just look at my unit circle and figure out, okay, um, where does sine x equal 1? That's at pi over 2. It's not anywhere else, because if it's at the bottom, it's negative 1, not positive 1. And then sine x equals negative 1 half. That happens in the third and fourth quadrant. And it happens at, what, 7 pi over 6 and 11 pi over 6, I believe. <coughs> so only actually three answers on this one. Because it's between 0 and 2 pi. So uh, this next section is going to say use half angle identities to find an, an exact value without a calculator. So uh, cosine of 75 degrees, the way this works is I want to uh, write this with the identity in mind that this would be uh, 150 degrees over 2. Okay, I want to write it, because if I look back to what the identities are, okay, my identity for cosine is cosine of u over 2, and then I plug u in. So what over 2 is 75? That's what we're saying. Okay, what over 2 is 75? 150 over 2 is 75. And then I need to fill in the other side of my formula. For cosine, it should be 1 minus cosine of u, and u is 150 degrees, and then I put that over 2. And so then I need to look at um, a couple things here. Cosine of 75 degrees, is that a positive or a negative value? Well, 75 degrees is in the first quadrant, which means that it is a positive value. So we would only put the positive in front of the square root or nothing at all. We wouldn't make it negative. Okay, so you have to look at what is this angle I'm starting out with and decide. Should it be positive or should it be negative whenever I work it out? This should be positive. Uh, and then underneath our square root is cosine of 150 degrees which 150 degrees is over here, 30 degrees short of 180. And so that value for cosine is negative square root of 3 over 2. And then it's all over 2. And um, it kind of depends on, I guess, who your teacher is as far as how much they want you to simplify this. Because um, this is 1 plus the square root of 3 over 2 over 2 and then I mean you could find a common denominator on the top and make that 2 over 2 plus the square root of 3 over 2 over 2 and you can make that the square root of 2 plus the square root of 3 over 2 over 2 and then that's really 2 over 1 so you can flip it up and multiply and make that 2 plus the square root of 3 over 4, and then the 4 would go outside the square root. And you just have 2 plus the square root of 3 underneath your square root over 2. Um, you know, I'll let you guys know at what point I want you to stop simplifying. And if you're in Mr. Hazelwood's class, then ask him at what point he wants you to stop simplifying there. Because, I don't know, it kind of depends on how your teacher's feeling that day as far as how much you should simplify. Okay. Example 7. I think this is the last one. It is. Okay. Use the power reducing identities to prove the identity. So let's take a look back at what th those were. Power reducing identities take sine squared, cosine squared, and tangent squared and reduce them to something without a squared. And so we this is something actually that gets used quite a bit in calculus because um, of something you do in calculus. You'll, you'll get there. So our first step is that we want to think, uh, we want to work on the left side and we want to say, well, sine to the fifth power, I don't have an identity for, but I do have identities for sine squared. So let's break this up into sine x times sine squared x times sine squared x. 
and each of these sine squared x's I can use that power reducing identity for. So the sine x isn't going to change. But sine squared x is 1 minus cosine 2x. Okay, and basically that's going to happen twice. Okay, if I multiply these together, well, on the bottom I have 2 times 2, which is 4. But on the top, I'm going to have to FOIL that out. So 1 minus cosine 2x, 1 minus cosine 2x gives me 1. My outer and inner terms add together to be minus 2 cosine 2x. And my last terms, negative cosine 2x times negative cosine 2x, gives me plus cosine squared 2x. OK. Now I'm a little bit closer to where I want to be. I can go ahead and move out this 4 on the bottom and say this is 1 fourth sine x on the outside. And then that's going to get rid of my fraction on the inside. And then I can change cosine squared 2x. This right here, I, again, like I can reduce the power on this. Okay, And so what that gives me if I reduce the power on that um, is inside my parentheses here. I'm not changing 1 minus 2 cosine 2x. I'm changing cosine squared 2x. Let's think about that. That's cosine 2x squared and I'm putting it into the power reducing formula which is 1 plus cosine 2x but really my angle is 2x so I would put 2x in there and so I get 1 plus cosine 4x over 2. Okay, and again, the reason is because I, I don't have x here, I have 2x. And I have a 2 in my formula, so let's multiply those together and get 4x. So in here, I would put 1 plus cosine 4x over 2. Okay, now let's look back at our identity. Um, basically, we have a 1 fourth here and they have a 1 eighth. We have a fraction on the inside of this and they don't. So let's get common denominators on the inside of our parentheses here. Uh, this would be 1 fourth sine x still. This would be, I want a 2 on the bottom, so it would be 2 over 2. I want a 2 on the bottom of this, so that would be 4 cosine 2x over 2. And then these aren't going to change because it already has a 2 on the bottom of those. So I sh could have combined a couple steps here actually. I want uh, 2 and 1 to go together, which is 3. I can't do anything with minus 4 cosine 2x or the cosine 4x. Um, and then all over 2. Well, I can pull that 2 from the bottom out and make this 1 8 sine x. Put parentheses around it for fun so it matches up. And then this parentheses is 3 minus 4 cosine 2x plus cosine 4x. And I believe that that is what we started with up at the top. 3 minus 4 cosine 2x plus cosine 4x. Right. So that's the end of our proof. And a uh, big smiley face because that was pretty tricky. Uh, with some hair and maybe like a light bulb because Eureka, he's got it and it turned on uh, like so and yeah, so there you go.